how do you choose the lube you put on your bike? Just go with a well-known name, because some of the best known are among the worst performers. And that's according to a guy who tests bike lube for the industry. He also runs an amazing website that we're gonna talk about in this video, in which we take a deep dive into lubrication, which I hope is not gonna be as disgusting as it sounds. Zero Friction Cycling tests the effectiveness of lubricants, and the man behind it is Adam Kerrin, who's in Adelaide, Australia, and we spoke over Zoom. Control testing that Zero Friction Cycling does show pretty starkly that there's a massive difference between the top lubricants versus your, you know, average, you know, sort of okay lubricants and your not very good lubricants. Why does this matter? Partly because friction means wasted effort, but mainly because it means parts wear out faster. Chains are not cheap, and cassettes and chain rings can cost hundreds of pounds. So over time, poor lubrication can cost you thousands. To me, it's actually really the most important component on your bicycle because your chain lubricant is going to be responsible for your drivetrain's lifespan. And especially for a lot of drivetrains these days, especially if you're running the high tier group sets, um, the cost to run difference per year, if you cycle sort of any, any decent amount at all, adds up, you know, very quickly. We're talking for, in a lot of cases, well over a thousand dollars a year can easily be quite a lot more than that. This is from Adam's YouTube channel. It's linked in the video description. Little differences add up to a lot. So. And this is Adam's rig where he tests lubricants. So what makes a good one? As well as environmental concerns, it's the ability to stay clean, to not pick up debris, because that is what abrades components. And one of the worst contamination magnets is the factory grease that covers most new chains. The trouble with the factory grease uh, is that every particle of you know, airborne dust and contamination, it is going to stick on contact. You will have something that is you know, becoming more and more abrasive, masquerading as your chain lubricant. So if you go to apply um, any of the, really the top lubricants on top of the factory grease, you're just going to end up with a gunky mess because these lubricants, what they need is clean, clear chain metal so that they can bond to that clean, clear chain metal and work as they are designed to work. Well, surely a few rides on the factory grease can't harm, can it? Well, if you're thinking that and you might be enjoying this, then perhaps you'd consider subscribing. Perhaps take a look at the join button. Press that, it's below every video. These people did just that. They are part of the production crew and adventure crew. And thank you all for being members of this channel. So the factory grease, surely a quick ride doesn't harm. Apparently so. Do some rides with the factory grease on the chain. You're going to need, literally, you're going to use liters of solvent to clean that chain perfectly, as opposed to when it's brand new you can clean that factory grease off quite easily with a fairly low amount of solvent. Chains really do take the strain. Adam says they go through around 40,000 articulations each minute. That's a lot of moving parts. And you need to clean inside those links, remove that factory grease and replace it with good lubricant. Here's how he recommends to clean the new chain. You need two relatively cheap chemicals, turpentine and methylated spirit. First, soak the chain in the terps three or four times for 15 minutes each, with 250 ml of fresh terps in each bath. Methylated spirit removes the resulting film. Two baths in this, and you can keep the second one for the first bath next time. When dry, it leaves a clean chain ready to take lube. So which is the best lubricant? Essentially, there are four types. The regular drip oil we've all used, wet lubes. There's a huge variance in performance of these. Silka Synergetic is top as of June 2021. You need so little, it picks up minimal contamination. Dry lubes try to put immersive waxing in a bottle. Squirt and Smooth were the forerunners, a carrier fluid that evaporates. There are initial penetration issues with both. The newer generation are chain coating lubes, and these are recommended. Adam says when the carrier evaporates, it leaves a solid lube coating that resists dust and particles. And immersive waxing, where the chain gets dunked into wax. Adam cautions against non-specialist waxes and recommends these. It's just quite clearly king in terms of keeping your chain 
super low friction day in, day out and delivers the lowest wear rates. Um, and uh, I guess the other part is that it's just a lot, lot easier than what people think. There's a lot of misconceptions around immersive waxing, like it's really hard. Um, it's not suitable if you constantly ride in wet weather conditions and things like that. So I've been trying to um, sort of counter that. A quick thank you to those who've joined the channel, particularly these people in the production crew and adventure crew. Your support lets me make videos like this. And if you'd like to know more, please hit the join button below this video when it's done. Lubricants are more difficult for cycling media to review than a lot of other products. Of course, Adam can't test every lube, but he stocks the best he has tested. I listen to his recommendations and I look at what he sells in his online store. Adam's fact sheets are a fantastic resource, a step-by-step -step guide not only to immersive waxing, but also to using emulsion waxes like Squirt and Smooth, which are best applied in a specific way, to chain coating lubes and to wet lubes, and crucially how to clean your chain after rides. His cost to run downloads will tell you some of the worst lubes to avoid, and I am certain you will know their names. I've now switched to using UFO Drip on my best gravel bike and I probably will try immersive waxing and when I do I will definitely use Adam's method and to download his information sheets. Now if you think he is wrong, for example if you're convinced, I don't know, chainsaw oil is the way to go, then he thinks you are wrong. You will need the data to prove it and he's the guy to pick the argument with, not me. You will need the data because that's certainly what he has got. I really just wanted to make this video to draw your attention to Adam's website and his YouTube channel. I'm grateful to him and I think the whole uh, cycling community should be because it's a fantastic resource. If you found this helpful, give me a thumbs up and subscribe please and I'll see you again next time.